Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the classic world of darkness. We're all friends, we're here to have fun, but our story can include graphic violence, drug use, sexual content, and other mature themes. We talked at our table about safety, comfort, and consent, both as players and storytellers. We know what to expect. We're all excited to be here, and we want you to feel the same. So listener discretion is advised. Now, let's walk the path of night. Our story begins on March 10th, 1999. The killing spree has harmed the masquerade throughout the city, causing the mortal flock to worry, lock their doors at night, and avoid wandering the streets of New Haven. Upton Rollins maintains his praxis. The Zentosa remains at large as the Camarilla prepares to defend itself against the Sabah Crusade that intends to sweep up the East Coast. Akari, who has lost one of its members, is holding on to the domain by a thread. And together, they meet at the Cedarhurst Cafe, owned and controlled by Britta, so they might discuss what has come to pass and what they might do next. Snows have begun to fade, and the group meets one at a time, arriving to the Toreador's Haven, where she greets them at the newly polished up Haven. And Johnny, you're going to start us off as the one who arrives last. The uh, door to the Cedarhurst pushes open with a forceful shove. The bell attached to it gives a ring, announcing the arrival of Johnny Saxon. Johnny uh, stands just about six feet tall. He has a large, well-muscled frame hidden by some heavy uh, work and travel clothes. He has a pair of well-worn jeans with a couple of questionable stains from tromping around in the woods and maybe getting into a couple of fistfights. A pair of uh, thick yellow leather work boots that are uh, quickly tied and kind of trapping the uh, the bottom of his jeans. A uh, red and black flannel tucked in covered by his well-worn leather jacket. There are the scars of many fights, uh, small puncture wounds from knives and bullet holes from guns, and all kinds of other horrible things that probably uh, should have done a lot more damage if it hadn't been for his uh, precious leather. His hair is about shoulder length, but pushed back behind his ears, and it casts kind of a dark shadow across his brow, showing that he is looking tired. He probably hasn't been feeding as much as he has been or should be in the past few nights, and his eyes barely hide the hunger of his beast. But he keeps on soldiering through, turns and regards the rest of the coterie, nods to uh, Wynne on his left. Wynne sits on a chair, kind of splayed out, not really ever in her life particularly accused of being ladylike. She bears her stereo her typical rather trademark long white braid that encompasses the middle of her head but bald patches on either side now though there are cobra patterns on the bare skin of her scalp and if she holds her mouth right you can see the the unconventional fangs uh, resembling a viper fangs in her mouth a hood is pulled over her head most times but at this point she's pulled it down because she's among friends uh, her eyes the same green as a seagull's give her a sort of eeriness that most people would find unnerving, but she, again, has found a place with these people here. Uh, she wears her typical battle flannel, many different colors, a uh, red and blue flannel scrap tied around her wrist, a memory of a woman she used to be. She seems to have cleaned up her appearance a little bit. Her jeans seem to have been washed, even if they don't fit right. Her flannel is buttoned, even if it's clearly dirty. And her leather jacket is wrapped around her, even though, again, it's not necessarily meant to fit her frame. And her just god-awful Doc Martens uh, have been tied and maybe an attempt to have polished them. Uh, she returns the nod to Johnny and looks to Miles. Miles is kind of walking around, taking in all of the the shop and the improvements and changes that have gone on since he was here last. He's in a full-length leather trench coat, wearing sunglasses indoors with his slick back blonde hair. Nearby seems to be his katana in its vibrant red sheath. He's uh, currently just poking around and waiting for the whole coterie to show up. He's around six foot with slick black blonde hair and blue eyes, and he's, uh, even all this gear that he's wearing it's still very put together all the right places to look just correct with johnny coming in he looks over to britta 
Britta can be spotted wiping out the sink as the Coterie arrives. Everything in the place is immaculate now. The Coterie will notice that she's put various photographs and calendars up, like a collage of beautiful images. But the Toreador herself moves with her usual grace. Her brown hair is up into a neat, perfect bun. The big doe eyes, bright and light and innocent in her gorgeous face. But she's still got the red leather jacket that Johnny gave her, tied around the waist of the dress that she's wearing. Lace edges, spaghetti straps, dark colors, fishnets beneath. Just as everyone's kind of gathering in, Britta takes a look at the door for the final member to arrive, but no one comes. The group makes themselves comfortable amidst posh seating and has a moment to themselves with no eyes on them so they could actually maybe decompress, find comfort in one another, and perhaps most importantly, plot. Well, I hope you guys have been at least safe during this time period. It doesn't look like you guys have been unbusy. Johnny definitely casts him a perhaps me a little bit angry glance as being one of the bully boys of the domain has left him constantly working in these past nights to cover up masquerade breaches, reinforce parts of the domain. It's just been nonstop for, for Saxon. He pulls out a cigarette, pops it in his mouth, and lights it with a fleck of his zippo. Miles, um, safe might be a stretch. Britta, I got your message. Sorry, I haven't had a chance to call back. Are you okay? Well, it turned out all right, but, um... Well, the Xantosa visited. I guess that's maybe the place to start. Um, I didn't manage to get him to stay, but... Well, really, um... I'm sorry, when I don't know how to, I don't know how to say this. This is more something that you would be an expert in. Sure. Um... The Xantosa? No, um, <sighs> Romeo visited, too? I think Romeo he's... the Toreador. Romeo the dead Toreador. Mm-hmm. He visited you. It felt like maybe he pulled the Xantosa out of the room, and the room was cold and dark, and there kept being cl- like classical music and changes in, in the room, and I... Britta, I, I get it. We're all dead, but I hate to break it to you. Romeo got shredded. No, I realize that Romeo is extra dead, but he he was really here. I, I know that. I don't know how to... He, he I believe gave me you. This, I believe you. It was like a vision and um, about my past, about his past, and it felt like I was there. And What did it look like when you had the vision? Was it like when you, the one you had before, when you were in the Shadowlands? Yeah, it was like that. Okay. Has he been back since? No, um, not since he dragged the Xantosa out, or since it seemed like he got upset when- Johnny goes walking over to the, uh, the front of the cafe and kind of just looks around the street. He's a little bit, uh, impatient and is kind of pacing around. Look, kid, I- I'm- I want to hear more about these ghost stories. I do, but you said the- the Xantosa was here? Where'd Vito go? Well, he came in through the sink. Um, of course he did. The what? Miles just rolls his eyes at that. Just <laughs> just the worst. He came in through the sink and, um, well, he wanted to fleshcraft me. And when he got too close, something dragged him out of the room. I, I assume it was Romeo. It kind of... It dragged him out. Britta gestures with her hand. A graceful sweep from one side to another is the motion that she makes. But as she makes this motion, uh, she says, Yeah, it was like he... Flew? Okay. And where did he wind up? It was like he was sucked out in a vacuum. I I, I chased after him, but things had already changed in, in here. Things had become darker and colder, and it felt like it was just Romeo's presence. I couldn't find anything about the Xantosa there. That's all things that happen. So these visions that you had, did you write them down, record them? Well, I wrote down what I could of it, but honestly, I don't think I'll... A lot of it was a blur. Um, Romeo said that we were part of something called a Shadow Crusade. Um, like, a, like a training facility, maybe. Uh, a dark place. Does that mean anything to anyone else here? Because Shadow Crusade means nothing to me. I've Cru- never heard of that. Crusade sounds like something the Sabbat would say, but I've never heard them specifically call out a Shadow Crusade. The right. place that I was at it was sort of gray and, well, shadowy. 
um, the place in, in the memory that he brought me into, rather. Um, Memories of the Shadowlands like you had before. Yeah, a lot like I had before. It just, it went deeper in this time. And he said that we had chosen the names that we had. Romeo, that he had chosen the name Romeo, or that I had chosen the name Brittany. He dragged you into a vision, a memory. That's interesting choice of words. Well, I was asking him to talk to me. Um, if he was there, I didn't understand what that meant. And So, Britta, what you experienced, some of that is very normal when a wraith is present. But the aggression that he showed, the, the way you described the Xantosa flying out and you attributing that to Romeo, well, that's, that's, that's not typical. I wasn't sure if it was Romeo. I thought it might be, but at the time, the Xantosa was talking about um, his master, and he started giving... It seemed like he Johnny? might... Johnny? No, he was talking about a sleeping master. The master. He was, he's referenced it before. That's mm. why he couldn't be killed. Because right. he had to keep it in place and track and... Right, the house. It right. It felt like he was starting to give more information about it, and that's when he flew out, and I, I couldn't tell if it was Romeo dragging him out because he got too close to me, or if maybe something else got to him. That's all very odd. Do it's... you see anything now, when in this area? Nothing at the moment. Hmm. If it gets that cold again, you did the right thing calling me. I'm not, I'm sorry I didn't respond. Uh, maybe this is the time when I need to acquire an actual phone instead of a pager. Mm. We can make that happen. That might be for the best. Well, I don't know if Romeo intends to come back, but the Xantosa seemed like he intended to come back for whatever that's... What was his interest in you? Um, well, Britta looks visibly uncomfortable. She looks at Johnny and she kind of pauses a moment and straightens up. The Xantosa really liked that I shot him. Huh. Like, like, really liked that I shot him. You're talking about, like, the it was the pain? He said it was a new experience that he'd never had, and that he wanted to share more experiences like that with me, and... I mean, dying is generally a new experience that people don't get to experience multiple times, but... Wynn's fists visibly clench at the idea that he was making untoward advances towards Britta. You know, I've been thinking a lot about Vito. I was expecting that embracing him might work in our favor because we'd keep him alive so that your sire could use him against our enemies in, in the domain but he hasn't sought me out and i'm starting to get worried that he might have some kind of weird sympathetic link to some kind of horrible zamitsi elder i don't know everything about what that clan is capable of but i know that they the sympathetic links that they can create with their disciplines. He wanted to fleshcraft me. He what? She started the conversation off that way. He was claiming that he could get into my memory the, the same way that maybe you had, Miles. Something like that. Not, not quite the same, but well, no. I understand that he was, in theory, trying to use fleshcraft to affect your brain, I guess. He was offering that maybe he could, but maybe by digging around in my body... He could get to my memories and get me able to remember stuff. And maybe with that objective of creating a sympathetic link like that. That doesn't seem very plausible to me. No, me neither. Well, let's remember. When we found him, he was in a whole garden of flesh, if you will. Right. That house was filled with all kinds of crafted things. That flesh isn't simply created from nothing. I do remember that. If... If anything about my theory carries through, that might just be extensions of the elder he serves. In fact, he might we might might be better off not thinking of him as a ghoul, but simply an extension of the same elder. In which case, my embrace might have just been giving that elder access to my vitae. We will have to see. We don't have enough information at this time. Still trying to capture the veto is on the agenda. There are still multiple parties that wish him either alive and or dead, and having him run around on the uh, agenda. I feel like that should be that should be priority number one. I would love for it to be priority number one. Bzz, 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 bzz. Miles, your phone goes off. Excuse me for a second. 
I move over to the edge of the... Uh, Sheriff, we have a rather significant masquerade issue that we need you to look into. Uh, it is a matter of silencing. Uh, where and who? A man by the name of Detective Suarez. He's been investigating into actions performed by the killing spree, and recently he has come upon a handful of witnesses who saw some sort of um, a kindred mauling outside of the Elysium, some some uh, sabbat gangrel with claws and matted hair. Uh, regardless, uh, Detective Suarez has become aggressive in his pursuit of information, and monitoring his police reports, he is beginning to leave out details of his investigation. We believe that this is intentional, and that he is on to more than he is willing to admit to his superiors. Mr. Suarez and anyone that he is currently associated with needs to be reviewed, and if they cannot be brought to heal, the kind must be eliminated. Who is this? You recognize the voice as Reese. Reese, why are you passing me this information? I was asked to by his grace. Fuck. Johnny's eyebrow definitely arches as you mentioned the name Reese. Congratulations on your elevation, by the way. I expect you will perform far more admirably than the Bruja. I've done well so far. I know. We'll speak again, Reese. Of course we will. I hang up the phone. So you buddies with Reese now? No, my new position calls for me to be interacting with more people than I did previously. You got a new position, too? Yes. I assume by that you also have a new position. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, definitely. Let's start with mine, then we'll go with yours. At this point in time, I have been appointed the new sheriff of New Haven. What? Breda takes a step back. Where's Weathers? Weathers is taking a temporary leave of absence. The fuck does that mean? He hasn't decided if he's leaving the domain or not. That's what it means. Now you're going to let me explain? Sure. That's not very good. One, do you really think that I wanted to take Weathers' position? No, I absolutely don't. Right. So I didn't take it. I took it under duress. Duress? I couldn't back out of it, basically. The prince... You mean shit rolled downhill and he didn't say anything as it rained on his head? I definitely said something. Uh Uh-huh. Thank you, Your Grace. Am I right? No. Well, well, what did His Grace want? Just for you to be the sheriff? He, basically the reward for preventing the Praxis was becoming sheriff. After he'd awarded me a Ventru symbol of status. And at that point in time, I could not refute it, even though I tried to inform him that Weathers was integral in preventing that Praxis. Did he want you to be the sheriff, or did he just not want Weathers to be the sheriff anymore? It's unclear. All he was told that I, basically, is that I was the new sheriff... And that I was to inform Weathers that he was no longer sheriff because he allowed these things to happen in his Elysium. And these orders come from his grace? Or did they come from your new buddy, Reese? Johnny, do you really think Reese is my new buddy? No, but he's got your number and given you orders. Johnny, people have your number too. Yeah, but I don't take orders from every shithead that calls my phone. Johnny, would you stop and just think about this? I was there when you fought Reese, and Shaw, and the Lupine. I'm doing what I can to keep this domain together at this point, and that's part of it is I can't always refute what the prince wants. And you, well, I mean, if Weathers left, you don't really have a choice, right? I'm hoping that Weathers will come back and work with me and get this done. This is not the time to be fractured. What about Jane? Jane is with Weathers. She will go where he goes. So the Domain's just pretty much lost all of their bruja. I don't know. This is a rather new position. That's why you hadn't heard of it yet. Reese calling me is a new development, and I am not pleased by it, and I am working to counteract his position in the Domain and, and his power. Yeah, I thought we were working towards that too, but apparently nothing's changed, huh? Not necessarily true. What do you mean? Who is Seneschal? As soon as I get it cleared with the prince, it'll be Elsa Linden. But he agreed to that, as part of that conversation that ended up with me being sheriff. The prince did. Correct. The less power Reese has, the happier I'm going to be, and the safer the domain's going to be. I'm working on trying to limit him, but at the same time, he is still an important asset in this domain's protection. And I don't like him, and I don't like him being there, but he's also going to be a high-priority target for the Sabbat, which I don't mind. And guard the party line, right, Sheriff? 
Haven't we been kind of doing that anyways? Makes you question all kinds of things, I guess. Yet again, are you saying that I haven't been doing the actions that you think is right so far? You've been with me along the way here. You've seen the decisions that I've made. I'm doing what I can under the circumstances that I have. You just keep on making all kinds of smart, slick venture moves as of late. And it makes me question a lot of things, that's all. Like what, Johnny? Well, we all risk our lives. And at the end of the day, most of the same shitheads are still in power and Miles gains status. And why is that a bad thing? Did you want status? Do you want more responsibility? No. I didn't necessarily want this bump at status either. This job does not make what we've been doing easier. I know. So I'm working to fix that. And if we can get Weathers and crew that back, that will go a long way. And how the hell do you expect to do that? Johnny, maybe they'd listen to you about it. <laughs> what? I mean, you know them well enough for it. The only reason that I'm still with the Camarilla is because of Weathers. Camarilla. Camarilla. I need a frenzy check for the job. <laughs> <laughs> Self-control? Oh yeah, buddy. Defeat. <laughs> One success. Johnny narrowly avoids a frenzy. You hear his jaw audibly grind. The only reason that I am still with the Camarilla is because of Weathers. And you want me to go beg him to stay? And the only thing that you have to say about that is to tell me that it's the Camarilla? Why, you've corrected me before. You think it's fucking smart to push my buttons right now? Why you've been pushing mine this entire conversation? Why are you the exempt to this? I'm doing stuff also, and you keep thinking that I'm just out here fucking everyone. Give me a reason to listen to you that isn't just Johnny do more of my bidding. When have I ever said do my bidding? I am saying, do you want these people Don't to live- Don't fucking dodge the fact that you double speak all the time. I very it is, it rarely is double blood. speak with all of you. Fuck off. Guys, take a breath. We don't have time for this. The only reason I am still in the Camarilla, Johnny, is because of you fuckers. And we've lost one of you fuckers. Now, I am gonna stay here until I am the last goddamn gangrel standing in this domain. And I'm gonna do that with or without you fuckers with me. Now, Miles, you talk slick. Johnny, you talk mean. We don't have time for that shit. Are we gonna get along? Are we gonna try and save this fucking domain? Or are we done? Am I standing alone? You're not standing alone. Johnny, am I the only fighter in this bunch anymore? Johnny takes a long drag in his cigarette and stares daggers back at you. Wynn just returns the glare. He blows out the smoke and kind of just shrugs and, and gives you a hand gesture like, continue. So, you're looking at the gangrel primogen for the domain. I was afraid you were going to say something about that. Why afraid? What's wrong with that? We have a voice on the council that's good, isn't it? What happened to the other gangrel primogen? Oh, he's dead. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Outside the domain. Didn't violate any of the tenets of the Camarilla. Did you check? Yes. Okay. Before or after? That doesn't... Does that matter? No, I'm just curious. <laughs> Wait, hang on. How does... That's still not violating the right of destruction? or how No, does... it's not his prince's domain. I didn't violate his right of destruction. Yeah, it depends on what the prince has to say about that. Well, that's why I keep you fuckers. I'm using that word a lot. I really need to get a thesaurus or a rhyming dictionary or something. I must have one somewhere. I went to college. There's a rhyming dictionary? Creative writing classes. Huh. Jesus, get it the fuck together. Johnny's eyebrows raise when you mention you went to college. He seems impressed and or surprised. You're not sure. Anyways, I can handle the primogen thing if it comes up. Though I feel like the prince might not even notice. I, I guarantee it's going to be not something he either really knows or cares about. Rusty was under Shaw's payroll, and frankly, I'm the, I am the only gangrel in the domain. Yeah, your previous speech made me think that too. Yeah, I am, I am only accountable to myself, which kind of feels appropriate. All right. That and you guys. I think we all are our own better angels and worse demons at some time. 
So I have a laundry list of things that keep popping up that I have to keep taking care of. Is there anything else that we should know about before I start putting my other things on the table? Short answer, yeah. What else? You know the Holy Land? The not, name... Not the one in the in the Middle East, the one in, in Waterbury. Yes, that defunct park? Yes. Isn't there, like, a bunch of abandoned, like, Bible stuff there? Yeah, that's not the only thing that's there. There's some, um, zombies? Um, dead, reanimated corpses? Like us. No. Mm. No, like... Like feral, like animals, like... Were they able to speak? No. Like, like the ability to speak doesn't make someone intelligent, Johnny. Like, it is a notable difference in, in, this, in certain categories of thing. It, to answer your question, no. They could not speak beyond grunting and groaning. So more like, like, a, like a movie zombie. Yes, very much like a movie zombie. And that's an issue for the masquerade? It's an issue for the masquerade. It's an issue for the Shadowlands. Something is happening in the Shadowlands. It's centered over Boston, and it's starting to bleed into here. The, the wraiths of the dead are finding their way back into their bodies, and they're starting to walk. I've heard that there's certain clans outside of the Camarilla that have the ability to summon minions like that. The Giovanni. Raven gave me some information about them, and um, I'm going to be making a trip to Boston to talk to them about what's going on. You sure that's smart? No, it's not smart at all. But if I want to stop what's happening here, there's going to have to be some action outside of the domain. Don't you mean we're going to make a trip then? Wynne just smiles, like her heart grows three times in size. If you want to come, I'm not going to say no. Want to come? There's only one dumbass in the domain that can get you that get you to the Boston without any trouble. Well, good thing he's one of my favorite dumbasses. <sighs> he rolls his eyes. Wynn kind of reaches over and punches him on the shoulder like, come on, buddy. I'll see what else I can hear about that nearby. Hopefully we can avoid a trip to Boston, but... Unfortunately, that's where the center of the action is. There's also, um, just so you guys know, you, Joey's still around. He's he's hanging out with me. Good. Um, that means most of that came together almost 100%. I'm, I'm going to take him still being around as a huge win, not to... Make fun of my own name. The uh, the city's been crawling with reports of weird things coming from uh, New York. I uh, I haven't seen too many of them with my own eyes. The other night, I did have to deal with something that uh, infected some local kid. Infected? Yeah. I don't really know what to say happened to him. But Let's... he wasn't like a zombie. He was still alive? <sighs> Sounds like alive is a strong word. Apparently, uh, according to his girlfriend, he got bit by something in, in the uh, subways over in New York. And when I finally put him down, I can't say what exactly that was, but he wasn't human anymore. But he wasn't dead? He was dead when I got finished with him. I burned, I burned the remains and uh, nothing's coming back from that. So what's odd about it? Never seen something like this before. And seeing that come all the way up to New Haven's uh, a little bit worrying. Miles kind of nods at that. So we've got it from both sides of the uh, coast. We're getting it from Boston and New York. Jane and Weather's left with not leaving me much of anything, and I'm still trying to sort through all the reports. So some of this is nothing I'm aware of yet. We might want to keep our eyes peeled for um, any more kids that are killed like Joey. All just, right. Just to, I don't know what the Zamitsi is still doing. If he went back to the house, there's a chance he could be making more creatures. There's a chance they could be killing more kids like Joey. And there was definitely a detective on at uh, Joey's house when I took him to say goodbye to his mom. What was the detective's name? His name's Suarez. He's been on some of this stuff before. That's on my... That's the same detective that the, uh, the domain wants you to take care of in silence, right? How much of that call could you hear? Is Reese that loud? He's very nasal. Oh. Is that something that... Is immediate, Miles. Fairly immediate. He seems to be on the trail of uncovering the masquerade. I feel like that should be something I can handle without too much of an issue. We can handle. I mean, I I can just mess with his memory. Detective Suarez? Yeah. He's... That would be my first instinct, and then we can go from there. It's the least intrusive I'm... of the items. I mean, that's better than off him, because he does an awful lot of good. Right. My... 
attempt isn't to remove the current infrastructure that the humans have. He seems to be doing a good job. He seems to be doing his job in general, but he's getting too close. Yeah. And he doesn't seem to be... He's, Apparently he has been... I would imagine he's been offered bribes at this point, too, and refused them, which doesn't make things better. He's also just come very close before now. I've had my eye on him for a little while. So, at this point, also, as we discussed before, Vito Santosa, multiple factions want him, including my sire still. You know, when the spooky stuff started happening at my haven stuff that i think must have mostly been romeo or some of it might have been Vito. i'm not sure but i thought it'd be neil at first but if more stuff like that keeps happening i can point out the santosa that's good neil is still mia so we we haven't found him correct i don't know if that makes this better or worse johnny kind of just hangs his head don't get your hopes up. I'd rather know one way or the other. This in-between crap is... It's not great. Well, we'll be able to hopefully dig into that at some point. Wow. The Detective Suarez needs to be dealt with. I feel like I can handle that. Johnny, I really do need you to talk to Weathers. What do you want me to ask him? Just talk with him. I, ju- I would prefer that he stayed with the Domain and working with us to prevent the Sabbat. I feel like you also want to prevent the Sabbat from coming through. Miles, you got given Sheriff because of what happened with the werewolf, right? Correct. Well, that was both of you. That was... Johnny, that was you too. And as much as... I'd like for Weathers to be Sheriff too, but we need to support each other in this. Otherwise, His Grace is just going to pick a new person, and we won't be able to help the Domain in the way that we'd like to. Britta, I'm not sure you understand. Him getting sheriff was a punishment. It was a twofold punishment. It was hitting Weathers and stripping him of any power that he had sought, that he had been building in the domain because he made a move against Reese. And it was a punishment to Miles because now Miles is under the thumb of Reese. I think you're giving the Grace a little too much credit in all of this. The gri- his Grace? No, yeah. I'm giving him no credit. It's Reese. it's Reese making all the moves and using using Rollins as a, uh, a mouthpiece. Possibly. I'm working to Remove diminish that. that influence. I am going to be meeting with the Venture soon. Other Venture. And hoping to get Reese in a contract of sorts. I just need to check with my sire. By other Venture, do you, do you mean your sire? My sire are among them. We need to try and see if we can if we can't find Vito and make sure that you have him when you talk to your sire. It would go a long way. Otherwise, we have to be careful because I know that Rollins and them want it to give to the Tremere, and I'd really rather not do that. Wynn kind of pulls a napkin out of one of the dispensers and grabs a pen from her pocket and kind of sits at the bar. So what is it in the best, most coherent order of things. What is it we need to be focused on first? Well, I needed to deal with Suarez first, and also talking to Weathers. I was supposed to give him a couple days, he didn't want to see me, but I feel like, if nothing else, you and him should talk. And I'll, if ta- you... I'll talk to Weathers. I, I'm not I looking for I a guarantee or anything. I can't make any promises that you're going to like anything that comes out of the conversation. I'm sure, but... But I'll try and curb the worst of his plan weathers is an excellent person it's just he's been i don't necessarily know if the sheriff was working out for him he was getting bled on the boon side a lot for trying to do the right thing all the time and i don't it's choose your words carefully here he's, he's, he is one of my best friends he and i a, owe a lot to that man so right. if you got opinions about him i'm not saying that i'm just telling you that's the he was in a bad position and he knew it so after talking to weathers and dealing with suarez what next? I'm supposed to find Arabella Rollins. Do we have any leads on that? Not yet. Wynn starts jotting down notes. Her handwriting is god-awful. Are you writing notes with a napkin? Yeah. I've got some paper if you want. Um, That might be better. I'm blowing right through this napkin. <laughs> Britta seems to have art supplies all around her haven, actually. Strange variants of art supplies. Uh, she hands you, like, a nice, thick... Uh, a notebook of, like, nice, thick, quality paper. And... Uh, the first thing that she finds is a pack of, like, watercolor colored pencils. Jesus, are you sure you want me using this? Why not? Because I may destroy it. Try not to. Okay, I can do that. So, 
after Weathers, it's probably Vito. Those are Weathers, Vito, and preparing for the Sabata, the top three of my priorities. So where does Arabella fall in that? Wherever we can fit it. I don't have any leads into her at this time, but I don't know. I unfortunately don't. I need to develop a new person to find leads. So I know I also need to deal with Boston and... The um, Romeo situation sounds like something Britta and I should be looking into. Yes. And um, I think, unfortunately, I might be the best lead we have for Vito. And for that reason, for everything, I don't know if I should... I want to stay in contact with you guys. I don't think we were ever advocating that we drop out of contact with each other. I'll get cell phones for everyone. What I mean is that I might be the best... She kind of closes her eyes and looks like she doesn't want to say it best bait we have to get Vito. I don't want to agree with you. Something I think we should all consider. In the coming nights, I think we should probably stop making a habit of going anywhere by ourselves. I agree. We should always be at least in a pair. I agree. There's too many threats in the city right now, and we can't afford to be caught by ourselves against any of them. No. Killing spree is still active, though they've slowed... Which makes me worried that they're moving for something new. All for right. Neil's sake, I don't want to lose another one of you. So how do we want to do this? Wynn just kind of looks to everyone except herself. I need to deal with Suarez. Probably now-ish. Alright, then let's go deal with Suarez. I think uh, you and Britta should probably go talk to Suarez. Okay. She might actually be a, a good hand in, in uh, doing that. And you also might want to consider possibly deputizing her can you do that if she's under the accounting i think the current state of the domain makes a lot of traditions a little bit more flexible i'll probably still need to get that approved but it's i don't know how to be a deputy it just means that when some shithead asks you why you're doing something you can tell them you're working for the sheriff's office that's all that means okay i think you and i should probably go see if we can find weathers yep that sounds like you should be a deputy I am. You're a bully boy. Same thing. Different title. Doesn't it make more sense for, for you, Johnny, to be the deputy? I mean, you're the link. He, he can have as many as he wants, as long as they're people he trusts. Well, that's you. Choose your title. The title doesn't, doesn't matter. All, deputy all Saxon I'm, sounds pretty good. All I'm saying is that you should also consider keep putting, putting Britta under that umbrella as well. Once I can finish out the accounting, it's on. we'll see what's going on at that point. She may not want to do this kind of work either. Well, I said earlier, um, I think we all have to do this together. I, I know that you can, but we need to stick together right now. So let's let's go deal with Suarez. Agreed. Do you mind coming with me to go find Weathers? Do you mind having me come with you while you talk to Weathers? No, that'd be all right. All right. All right, check in you too. All right. After a difficult conversation, the group splits up to head out to handle business. Miles and Britta, the two of you step outside of the haven. Uh, Miles, why don't you give a quick description of the car that the two of you are now approaching? We are heading towards a 1998 Storm Purple Lamborghini Diablo. It goes 0 to 60 in (laughs) 3.5 seconds. It has 512 horsepower. He said a brief description. (laughs) It should have a longer description than I do. (laughs) <laughs> Britta takes a second, appreciates the car, steps uh, in the passenger. Britta, you need a self-control <laughs> Oh, you do. That's true. It is a beautiful car. It is a beautiful car. It calls to you. It calls to me, too. Through its storm <laughs> purple glow, <laughs> demanding that you admire it. Difficulty is six. Every die that's six and up is a success. Every one will count against your total number of successes. I have one success. Okay. You kind of shake your head and blink as you realize that the vehicle very nearly captivates you, which would probably not be great if you saw it on the road. This is a really nice car. Yes? Um. We're going to be driving in it, so it'll be even nicer. Britta looks like she wants to say more, but she's not quite sure how to approach the subject, and she kind of just stands and stares at the car for a bit longer. Is there a problem? Um, if something like this surprised me, it, it might... I think it might freeze me. I don't know what to do about that. I guess maybe I could try to... I'm not driving uglier cars. (laughs) Britta opens the door and gets in. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, the door does not open as you expect it to. What happens? Uh, I believe it has gull wing doors. Yeah. <laughs> so it, they rotate upwards. Britta tries to open the door and notices that her grip is a little bit wrong and adjusts. <laughs> I'm just going to make a few phone calls and then we'll be ready to go. All right. You get into the futuristic work of art and Miles begins making calls to contacts. Contacts. Okay. What information are you looking for? I am looking for either Suarez's Suarez's phone number would be good, and also if a current location or where I can find him at, besides the police station, would probably be best. Uh, they get back to you. Uh, I'm, by the time you're hitting the road and starting to kind of peel out, you do notice this thing goes pretty quick, pretty fast, mm. and has this like very faint purr to it. While you're getting out, your car phone goes off and your contacts get back to you, letting you know that Detective Suarez has apparently been investigating into Joey's death along with a handful of other cases. And he is currently at a place called uh, Sherwood Cafe meeting with a woman by the name of Sheila Mendez. Why does Sherwood Cafe sound familiar? They respond that they don't know. Oh, right. I'll t- thank you. I hang up. Then I say out loud again, why does Sherwood Cafe seem familiar? Um, I mean, I don't remember it, but that doesn't really say much. I don't know. It'll it'll come to me when we get there. All right. How do you want to approach this? He's apparently interviewing a person named Sheila. Um, I'm kind of tempted to brute force this because I don't have time. I mean, if if he's smart, won't he just kind of get back on the trail? There are ways to make him turn away from it every time he decides to try to do it. All right. But I don't think he's going to give it up with normal persuasion. So there's two methods we can do here. We can either use the powers that we have to try to permanently dissuade him in various ways without killing him. Or we introduce him. Introduce him? In theory, we could make him a ghoul. Might he still be a risk, then? Less so after the blood bond takes place. Well, one thing that we could do is I could listen in on the interview that he's having. It'd be best not to approach him in a crowd. Though I'm going to stick out. It's kind of a known factor. And since I don't know the name of this place, I assume it's not a place that I would normally be a normal patron of. Sure. What part of town is the Sherwood Cafe in? Uh, it's actually downtown New Haven. Uh, not overly far from, like, Yale and that whole area. So it's a college bar, most likely. A ton of college kids, yeah. You might fit in quite well. All right. Is that something that we could use? Yeah, we could possibly use that to at least do an approach, go from there. You could possibly just see what he, why he's doing this, what his motivation is, responsibility of the job and such. But he's starting to go behind his superior's backs, which speaks to another motive. All right. What would I say? Listen in on him and maybe just try to get a grasp of why he's there. Maybe approach him with information. What could I give him that wouldn't be a problem? Make something up. Mm. I mean, you were there for the Sabbat attack. It isn't too hard to say you may have saw something. Hell, the report of this incident seems to be something that you mentioned before. It, yeah, it, it sounds a like... A grand girl on the street killing someone yeah. right around the day that the they hit Elysium. Yeah, it does sound familiar. All right. You can say that a friend of a friend told them that he was looking into this. All right, and then I'll get back to you? Yeah, I'll be around. Okay. Let's head to the Sherwood. You guys get to the Sherwood. It's not exactly where the money is Mm -hmm. in New Haven, but it does have, it looks to have a pretty strong presence. Uh, A good chunk of the nightlife is in the area having a good time. A lot of people outside smoking cigarettes, kind of gathered in like huddled circles to protect against the cold. When you pull up, there is a shit ton of gawking that happens in response to the car. You know, there's some quick cat calls and people make some ever so slightly lewd gestures directed at Britta. And you kind of make your way towards, uh, in, into the bar, kind of past these like idiot meatheads that are partying and drinking all night. Britta ignores the cat calls and slips away from Miles as soon as she gets any understanding of where the shit, someone who looks like a detective, someone who looks out of place, if there's anything that would tip her off to that. Besides myself. <laughs> Uh, when you get inside, mm-hmm. uh, it's a bit dingy and kind of smells of, uh, cigarette smoke. Mm-hmm. 
you come to the sight of uh, definitely a young woman who's been bartending. She's kind of got like a little bit of like a punk feel to her. Mm. And she is sitting across a table in a booth talking to an older Spanish man who's got like a lot of gray hair uh, and a very kind of tired expression where there's this like dogged determination to him while he talks to her and it looks like they're having a conspiratorial conversation all right my intention is to it's the first level of aspects to listen in with heightened senses right yes all righty that is my intention to maybe if the next booth over is empty or if there's somewhere i could stand depending on the music level or the noise level in here taking those factors into account to try to stand somewhere where people are less likely to bother me and I can hear them. So it looks like they're seated rather close to some speakers. Mm. So it's very hard to clearly make out what's being said between them. Okay. Uh, so you're going to have to get pretty close uh, and avoid uh, being in the path of where the speakers are projecting. All right. So I'm trying to figure out, seeing where the speakers are pointed, if there's a better vantage point, maybe on the other side of their booth. Yeah. Okay. Pull out my notebook, pull out um, some of the art supplies she's been working with, maybe a set of chalks, and pretend to be doing something while trying to listen in. Okay. You relax and start listening into the conversation. Sheila kind of explains that there was this guy, Eddie, that she was very close with, who recently disappeared after some stuff went on in New York. He asks her, you know, what she saw the night that there was... Uh, the big attack downtown, and she kind of goes on to explain that she mostly saw the rush of panic that happened uh, in the crowd and had gotten out of there before she really saw anything huge. But she did say, see uh, some, or hear rather, a like very, very loud animalistic noise. He kind of asks, like, you know, hey, um, uh, can you clarify that some, are you referring to like, uh, uh, like a big cat, like a roar, and she's like, "No, this was this was the sound of a wolf." He gives a nod, not actually seeming very surprised with such a strange description, and goes ahead and takes down some notes. Uh, meanwhile, meanwhile, uh, Miles, what's going on with you? I'm gonna head towards the middle of the bar since I'm in a very conspicuous, anyways. Uh, spend the blood to look human. Okay. Be friendly with those around me. Possibly buy some drinks in there. Engage the bartender. Just chit-chat and whatnot. And kind of keep an eye on Suarez and Brito from... Because I imagine they're down to my left somewhere. Uh, the bartender, a guy named uh, Paul. Uh, or rather, sorry, Phil. Um, yeah, he provides you with your drink pretty quickly. He's a friendly guy. And seems to not overly engage you. Uh, kind of picking up on you being interested in something else. Young woman and Detective Suarez uh, seem to wrap up their conversation. She gets up and she returns to the bar and uh, pretty quickly actually uh, checks in on you. She's like, hey, is there anything else I can get you? I order an expensive ass drink, drop some money on it. Large tip at this point, just paying for them as I go along. Okay. She accepts and uh, we'll go ahead and start preparing your drink. Britta, what are you doing? As uh, she goes over, starts interacting with Miles, Britta is going to hover a little bit before she approaches the detective and kind of holding the art supplies that she was messing with to her chest, come up to him slowly and say, um, I'm sorry, sir. I, I heard a little bit about the wolf noise. Are you an investigator? He makes a point of showing you his badge. Oh. Yes, ma'am, I am. Um, well, I, uh, um, look, I saw something strange that night, and I didn't know who I could talk to about it. I, I, it, I know it's going to sound ridiculous, but, um... He's kind of like looking down and taking notes. There was this fight in the street, and, um, well, it looked like, kind of like a fight between people, but... One of them had red eyes. Like, really red eyes. He raises an eyebrow and takes a look at you. I don't suppose you're open to more of a conversation on this. Um, she kind of shifts her weight 
and like stops to look at him and then slowly nods. Are you looking to make a report? I don't know if this is... Sometimes some stuff doesn't go well in a report. He kind of looks at you for a long moment. I don't know if maybe the red eyes thing would help, or maybe it would just make someone else not sound crazy, but... Look, whatever was going on that night, you seem like you really want to help. Were you listening to my conversation? When I heard the thing about the wolf noise, I came over here because uh, she kind of points out like the guys who are white wolf whistling. Uh, it just seemed like a better corner. Mm. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, but... No, it's quite okay. So you wanted to talk about this, or you simply wanted to let me know about the red eyes? I guess I kind of wanted to hear if anyone else... If it made me feel crazy, too. Well, you're definitely not crazy. And you're not the only one who's made reference to that sort of thing. All right. So if there's anything else you want to let me know, I will take anything you have to say very seriously. Um, could I take your number down? He goes into his wallet, pulls out a card, Mm. and offers it to you. She takes it, and she thanks him, and retreats, if he seems all right with that, uh, to a different corner of the bar than Miles is at. He kind of, like, watches you go... Mm-hmm. And write something down. Mm-hmm. I do not drop heightened senses uh, for a bit, so long as he seems like he might like. Until his attention turns is when I drop heightened senses, as okay. far as I'm aware. I know I, I don't have a great grasp on that, so. Mm-hmm. And once I kind of like set the card away, tuck it carefully into the thing that I wasn't really drawing. Take a second, and if I don't really look at Miles, uh, I just kind of take my own time for him to do whatever he's going to do about that. As I see her start moving away, I send her a quick text to see if she can check to make sure he's human or not. If she can do that thing. Um, then curse for not having Neil here. <laughs> I only have... I, I have heightened senses. I don't think I have anything else, so... Uh, how much aspects do you yeah, have? Yeah, I've got one level. And <laughs> so that is not think. something you can do. <laughs> Uh, there's a confused pause. Uh, she kind of stares in front of her at the bar for a second. Uh, then she texts you back and says, I don't think I can do that, sorry. Roger. And then I will wait for the detective to leave the bar so that I can follow him, because it sounds like... And I I basically send you a text, is there anything I should know? I send a text letting you know that, uh, he's gotten a lot of reports that match what I saw of the fight, and that he seems heavily invested, and, like, he knows much more than he's saying. That he does seem like he wants to help. It's like a series of texts. Britta is being careful uh, not to type too fast. There's sort of that temptation to, like, is there a word for that? Pressing the button over again so that you get the letter? T9. T9. Okay, yeah. She She's, with even without the celerity, it's, she's a fast texter. Youth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, basically at this point, I'll wait for Suarez to leave the bar and then... Make an approach once he breaks out of these crowds. Okay. Yeah, he lights a cigarette, heads over to Sheila, uh, lets her know that he's going to be heading out for the night. If she has any questions, she can feel free to call him. If she remembers anything that she hadn't thought to say before or wants to amend the story that she told, she's more than welcome to do that and to just drop him a line. He turns and he's like, he's in this like dingy white button up shirt. He's got like the tie. He's got like the long coat. He's got all of like the classic classic noir detective. Mm -hmm. Okay. Has it hit me yet that this place is related to Johnny? No. No. Okay. (laughs) Apparently I've never paid enough to know where he lives. (laughs) I'm sorry, Johnny. It's all right. (laughs) And uh, he heads outside. I text Brad. I'll be like, stay nearby, but don't expose yourself. And I'm going to follow Suarez out. Suarez steps outside. Uh, he's got this, like, shitty little sedan that he owns. But you do notice something else. Why don't you give me a perception plus alertness rule? Fuck. <laughs> you will funny. notice something no matter what. This simply lets you know what you notice. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. I will take two successes. Okay. Suarez uh, seems to notice the Lamborghini and gives like a, like a what the hell face. And he looks and there is definitely this guy leaning on it with a young woman kind of like pulled to him in his arms. 
And he's kind of kissing up on her and flirting with her and asking her if she wants to go for a ride in his car, like gesturing to uh, the Diablo as though it belongs to him. <laughs> I will deal with him in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Permanently. <laughs> <laughs> or remove him from the face of the earth. Not, not really. That seems a little extreme. But What's your humanity at? <laughs> Six. <laughs> on a good day. Mm -mm. Um, so I, I'll basically wait till Suarez gets to his car. I assume it's a little bit farther away from the bar. Uh, no, no, he it's is right there, right in front of the bar. Ugh. It looks like he has shortened the distance between his car and the bar as much as possible. There is a very clear, deliberate choice there. I'll call out to him at that point, Detective Suarez. Pauses. Uh, yes. Can I speak to you for a minute? Of course. He kind of like reaches into his coat, like kind of tucking his hand in, and then he takes his hand out and heads over to speak with you. Good evening, Detective. Good evening. Uh, so, I guess we should just start this off. What, are you recording us? Are we having a conversation? Because I, I record all of my conversations. I hope that's not a problem. It is a problem. You may opt out of the conversation if you wish, sir. You can opt out of recording all the conversations, because that's not necessarily legal. Of course it is. So long as I let them know. They have to agree. It's a double consent statement. And they can opt out if they don't agree. Right. He nods. <laughs> Very good. I've heard you've been looking into a series of things going on in New Haven. I have. What interest of this is yours? I'm a member of the New Haven Police Department, and I am specifically employed to do so, sir. Oh, and I kind of project my voice down as like, then why are you leaving off some of your things from your reports? That seems rather suspicious of you. Do you mean to imply that you have access to privileged information? That's not answering the question, is it? You're not able to ask me questions and demand answers. But now I have reason to suspect that you are accessing privileged information without actual uh, access to it. Are you sure? I am. How do you know I don't have access to it? You don't know who I am. I bet you it would not take much to find out who owns a car like that. And he points at the uh, Lamborghini. That's, That's not true. exactly a long list. So... I'm going to ask you a question. Why is anything I do any business of yours? Because it's drawing interest. Of who? Individuals. I see. And I want to know why. Because it's my job. It's more than your job. That's the answer you're getting. So who are these individuals? You're not getting that. He just kind of takes a step back. Pulls out a phone and just <laughs> takes a picture of you. Flips the phone closed. Tucks it into his pocket. I make a few phone calls. Report that there's some weirdo in a Lamborghini harassing young woman. Get your face on the newspaper. I'll keep you busy for a long time if I need to. So I'm going to make this very clear. Whoever these individuals are, Mrs. stay Suarez? in their corner. I'll stay in mine, and I'm going to keep doing my job. Why don't you follow me? Roll it. It's so amusing watching you do some sheriff work. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny's so satisfied. <laughs> Getting to see it in a mirror. <laughs> Difficulty? It's a uh, power. Nine minus whatever uh, yep. your mods are. Yeah. Look at the dots on Suarez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too bad my tongues explode. <laughs> so that'll be seven. <laughs> <laughs> God! <laughs> What's the time frame that gives? Is that seven rounds? Seven rounds. Okay. So where are you leading him? I am leading him. He definitely seems to like I, be I, under as the soon as sway I think, oh, of I just have him, And I wanted to get him in, around, out of the general view site. Okay, yeah, you take him, run back. There's, uh, there's a couple doors there, dumpster. I'm going to start off with the mesmerism just to try to get him in a, a state, basically. I want him to be in a supplicant state. Uh, no, what are Compliant. The words? Yes, thank you. Compliant so with state. mesmerism, you can give him right. an extended set of orders. Right. So I need to know what those are, and then you're going to roll. Okay. He meets your eyes and is kind of like unblinking, pupils dilated. Mr. Suarez, every time you continue to look into the oddities happening in and around New Haven, I want you to instead go do your paperwork. Possibly other people's paperwork. Roll. So that'll be three successes. Okay. Uh, successful uh, mesmerism. While he's in that state, can I still do the forgetful mind part of this? Yes. All right. Can I just, do you want to just roll it, or I need anything else involved with it? Uh, you have to specifically instruct him on what he's going to forget. 
Um, I'm and and what the memory is replaced with. Okay, so I should probably roll first because to see what what I can do because it's it's kind of specific. Yeah. Two successes says may remove but not alter memory permanently. So I'm going to tell him to forget our conversation and seeing me after leaving the bar. Okay. And then I will leave. All right. You leave him in the alley and head around front. And there's this guy who is flirting with a girl, kissing up on her. One of his friends uh, rather indecently exposed himself and starts pissing on the back tire of your car. Uh, the guy's like, yeah, get the fuck off my car, bro. What the fuck are you doing? And they start having this like little bickering and they're starting to like argue around your car. Uh, the guy pissing in my car. He's going to get a... I'm going to look at him as I'm coming in, into my car and go, run. <laughs> okay. Uh, give me a roll. Yes. Uh, he has a willpower rating of two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming you haven't told me to come out, so... I assume you're nearby. Oh, tell me when you instruct me to come out. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have time to zip his pants up. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Miles handling shit. Oh, what'd you get? Uh, seven. Seven okay. successes. He starts running, uh, starts tripping his pants, end up around his ankles. They were already very baggy, so it's just right down. <laughs> he takes off. The other guy uh, who is uh, rocking this, like, again, a bright red New York Yankees baseball cap and a big puffy coat and has been making out with this young woman, kind of, like, gives you an up nod, like the two of you are fellow cool guys. Sir. You're on my property. The woman gives you an indignant look. She's like, I ain't nobody's property. Not you, <laughs> you <laughs> ill mannered harlot. <laughs> yeah, call her a troll. Yeah. I was a wench was actually the word that I wanted to come wench. out. <laughs> Catch these hands, wench. <laughs> Wench was my first thought, but I'm also not from that time period, but just like, I feel like it might be like... <laughs> Miles, went to, right there. Miles yeah. went to a Ren Fair one time, and well, it's stuck in his brain. Uh, uh, first sire. of all, he wields the most archaic weapon from a more civilized time than any of you. No, also, my sire is like 500 years old, so that's oh, Those not, hands? Those yeah, hands ain't that hands. old. They're from like the 60s, so you're trying to play. <laughs> the 40s, thank you. <laughs> that's when they were, they're vintage. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, Tim, what were you doing? Have at thee. I really don't want him to mess up my car. But I also feel like Dread Gaze is terrible because it does all that weird hissing and stuff. So it, Dread Gaze specifically says you reveal yeah, yeah, your yeah. vampiric continence. Yeah, that's a bad plan. So you have exactly three seconds to get off my car. Oh, uh, his eyes kind of go wide with the realization. He's like, oh, this thing, I was, uh, uh, I, I, uh, I parked cars for the bar here. And he kind of like gestures to it. And she this gives bar? this. This bar does not have a valet. Well, you're looking at him, so I don't really know what to tell you, guy. Just. Uh, the young woman's like, fuck off, bro. This isn't your car. It's his. And she like. I look at her and go, chewing some silence. Gum. <laughs> I am done with these fuckers already. Wait, I want to know. Am I in the bar? <laughs> you, I assumed you would be out. I didn't want you to be far, so I assumed you'd be outside the bar at this point. Oh, okay. So I get to spectate. Neat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Neat. What's this willpower? Uh, her willpower? Yeah. Four. All right. Miles passing out fucking dominate like it's candy. <laughs> <laughs> she will take seven. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she gets this terrified look in her eyes as she finds herself unable to speak and argue with you, you the way that she wanted to. So uh, the guy, like Ash Ketchum, tilts his hat so that it's facing backwards, and he is going to attempt to sucker punch you. Are we in initiative? Yeah. All right. Oh, God. I really wish the audience could see Tim's face yep. when Lex said that. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. So, initiative? Mine is 11. I'm at 20. <laughs> she rolled a lot better than me. Uh, okay. Yeah, you fucking maxed out. I'm huh? not using any celerity. There's people around. <laughs> okay, he just rolled a die. It's fine. It's going on a 7. Uh, 20. <laughs> I mean, I'm not doing anything particularly exciting. I'm walking regular fast towards the situation. You walking regular or fast? Like regular human fast. Okay. <laughs> so you start jogging over to the situation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the look in Miles' eyes very clearly indicates that he is about to friend you on a crowd of people. Um, He's right there. Am I able me, to 
what is an action that I can do about that? Is talking him down? Like you can't preemptively. Cannot talk preemptively down. talk someone down. Yeah. That's the that's the Bruja life right there. Yeah. <laughs> I guess what I'm thinking of here, when I'm trying to get, like, the attention of ideally Miles, but, you know, it's just sort of, it's not really a Baywatch walk over if it's not in a bathing <laughs> suit, but. <laughs> so your plan is to slow jog? No, my. Because you're going to hassle off your way into the situation. <laughs> my Pamela plan... Anderson, this is the time. Yeah. For... <laughs> my plan is to, jo- like, to jog over and just say, hey. To Miles, and assumably anyone hearing the hay would. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that is performance plus charisma? Correct. Yes. Okay, and difficulty seven. If you're saying stuff, it'll be diff five. Div five, okay. It's, this is really okay. Yep. So do, that will be. Do you have a charisma spec? Hey. Charisma spec? Uh, I haven't gotten one yet. Do you have a performance spec? I've got charisma four um, at the moment, but I haven't put. What it is? What's up? <laughs> Charisma spec and what's up? <laughs> oh no, you have an appearance spec. She has right? a yeah. She has an appearance spec. Her yeah. Christmas spec is going to be a. Hey. It be, it be, I mean, it should be it factor. Oh, I know, obviously we know what it should be. What? Hey. <laughs> In quotation mark. Uh, you jog over, and what do you say? I just say, "Hey, let's go." That's honestly just very plain. Okay, so you're like, "Hey, let's go," and then. Everyone, including everyone across the street, people who are like at the stop lot, at the red light, who are, everyone turns to look directly at you. Uh, Miles, what are you doing? Other than looking at her, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you start there. Yeah. Uh, I will hold my action to see if this guy is still planning on decking me, and then I will. Uh, I guess I will spend the willpower and give him a still command. He is not looking at you. I still do it, can't I? No, you need eye contact. Fine. And she has specifically created a scenario where you do not have it. I will give her a nod and get in the car gracefully. Okay. Uh, you get in the car. Guy the red cap is like, I ain't afraid of no girl. And he turns and swings on Brita. Mm. No. Cute. He has two successes and with an open palm slaps the Toreador in the mouth. Mm. I'm going to need a self-control check. <laughs> Britta, mm. I need you to roll soak against one level of bashing damage. He cannot physically hurt you. You do not have to roll. <laughs> <laughs> it's halved and rounded down. Nothing happens. But you do feel his hand connect against your face mm-hmm. uh, due to public humiliation. I do need a self-control check. Mm-hmm. I pass. I assume it's regular difficulty. Yeah, you're not a bro. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. I will spend a willpower. He's in the car like, God, give me the strength. <laughs> <laughs> Lambo, give me strength. <laughs> Lambo, will, give me the strength. I, I mean, we are I'm counting not- down rounds until the fucking sheriff, sh- uh, not sheriff, uh, detective. Detective. detective shows up. The yeah. mesmerism will. I have one success, including the willpower. That means that you are not in frenzy. We go to you, brother. He is in your face, and he's like, I will choke the shit out of you. Can I just get in the car? Yeah. Then I'd like to open that ridiculous door and look out to the crowd that is looking at me just with like hurt puppy dog eyes as I step into the car. What the fuck, bro? Yeah. The crowd starts getting real mad on your behalf. I get us out of there. I'll let the crowd deal with him. Okay. Uh, you get out uh, in your rear view mirror. You can definitely see a bit of a uh, brawl outside of the bar escalate. The Sherwood's taking out uh, the trash. Detective <laughs> Suarez makes his way out back. You see him kind of like lighting a cigarette. He looks, tilts his head to the side at the sudden crowd and missing Lamborghini and just kind of heads off to do paperwork. Britta, as they're back in the car, flips down the car mirror and takes out like a tube of what's probably a brown lipstick, like a light brown, fixes what the guy smudged off her. Oh, that was entertaining. That go okay? Went as well as it could have been for my first time out. Glad to hear it. I think it'll hold for now, but I don't know. He seems fairly strong-willed. Well, maybe that's something to check back in on later. Hmm. He might be a good convert. I don't... Did you figure out any reason why he's doing this? He... I didn't get anything specific, but he seemed very, very motivated. Oh, Marco, stick into him. And maybe if you could... If you think he's that strong-willed, 
maybe he'll find a way around what you've told him. I'm sure, at this point. All right. I don't think he's going to forget my face. We have a little breathing room right now. All right. Tim, you did not get your picture out of his phone. Nor did you deal with the recording. Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the classic world of darkness. Britta Ashcroft the Toreador was played by Rebecca Steigelfest. Johnny Saxon the Bruja was played by Garrett Gabby. Miles Davenport the Venture was played by Tim Davis. Neil Foster the Malkavian was played by Rob Meerhead. Win Cabot the Gangrel was played by Erica Webb. Your storyteller was Lex Lopez. Recording by Rebecca Steigelfest. This episode was edited by Rob Meerhead. The music used in this episode was January Grunge Love Fest by Technoaxe. Visit them online at technoaxe.com. Path of Night uses the 20th anniversary edition rule set of Vampire the Masquerade with a few limited house rules. Vampire the Masquerade is owned by Paradox Interactive. Make sure to subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Twitter at Path of Night Pod, on Facebook at facebook.com slash Path of Night Podcast, or email us at Path of Night Podcast at gmail.com. See you next time, Kindred. This fucking plebe thinks he's gonna touch this me. This fucking plebe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you also could just take the shot. Yep. And like fortitude, like just glare at him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then he touched me. That is a fact. Miles has a thing for that. He, yeah, he's got a thing for touching. Oh yeah. Then, then the guy loses the hand, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not a good plan. Yeah. Oh, first of all, motherfucker, I'm here to defend the masquerade. Now you've touched me, so the katana comes out. <laughs> And the masquerade can take a backseat. Well, it'd probably be <laughs> yeah. a gun at this point. Um, again? You One can't cut someone's arm plus, off with a gun, uh, Tim. Plus, yeah. Pay attention. I didn't plus walk into the bar with a katana. <laughs> New, <laughs> New Haven's wiling out lately, man. There's <laughs> dudes walking around dice. with katanas. <laughs> taking limbs. Roll one dice. One die. Oh, my God. What a fucking World of Darkness situation we have here. Yep. And then add that number to your uh, wits, Motherfucker, and get away from my slayer. Lamborghini or uh, I'll cut your arm off. Uh, any levels of slayer. With my katana. Okay. My zero katana. Zero or a ten? ten. It's a ten. Ten. Okay. Uh, Dude's go bananas when he starts swinging his katanas. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the worst. All you gotta do is add the biscuits! <laughs> <laughs> you have, like, the song of this battle. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's name is Fred Hurst. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs>